that you must go with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. We must experience the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit. When you have been born again, when you have been baptized with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, you have everything it takes to have a victorious, glorious Christian life. The name that is above every other name, by the light of the word of God today, your eyes are open. There is something about giving sight to people that is crucial to their destiny. Welcome to another wonderful time in God's presence. God sent His word that was healed and delivered from destruction today. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, the Word of God that is coming in your direction today will bring healing to you. That Word will bring deliverance to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your goodness, for your faithfulness, for your mercy. Take all the glory in the name of Jesus. As we bring your Word to your people today, let it go with power. Spirit of the Living God, help us today and let your name be glorified. Thank you, Father, for everything. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Sometimes ago, in um, South Korea, uh, I read a story from Pastor David Yonggi book. There were these missionaries, these church folks, they were going for mission work, going to preach. So they got to a particular uh, location and they, they, there was this water body, like a little river, to get to the other side. Then they said, Jesus walked upon waters while he was here on earth. That day today they're going to walk over water to where they were going. And they've had some little um, lectures about faith. So they set out to walk upon waters. And because they know that sometimes when you are walking in faith, you've got to be tenacious, you don't give up, that there may not be result initially, that probably towards the, uh, towards the end that the result will show up. So they were walking upon waters and they were sinking. And all of them walked upon water and all of them perished in the, on the, uh, inside the water. And when the news got it, it make a big news in that community as at that time. And they thought they were operating in faith. But at the end of the day, they all lost their life in that process. So it comes to um, our attention that when can I say I'm really operating in faith? When can I say, all oh, I'm just doing, I'm just presuming? Or, why is it that, or when can I say I'm operating in complete foolishness? Because as far as the society was concerned, that, that those folks were just being foolish. Some could say, okay, they are just being presumptuous. But the truth of the matter is that the faith of the Bible, the faith of God, work all the time. The faith of God work all the time. The Bible makes us to understand that in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, it says without faith, it is impossible to please God. So we need our faith to live a life that is pleasing to God. Say, but without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is, and is a reward of those who diligently seek Him. So, because Christians, we are called to live a life that is pleasing to God. And that makes us understand that without faith, it is impossible to please Him. In fact, in our Christian life, everything we ever acquire, everything or everything we ever received, 
is on the platform of faith. For example, we are saved by faith. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. He said, We are saved by what? By faith. By grace are you saved through faith. So we receive the gift of salvation through faith. We receive the gift of sanctification through faith. Acts chapter 26, verse 18. He said, Those that are sanctified by faith. And we are empowered by the Holy Ghost through faith. We receive the Spirit of God through faith. And in the book of Romans, chapter 14, verse 23. Let's go to Romans, chapter 14, verse 23. But he who doubt is condemned if he eat, because he does not eat from faith. For whatever is not from faith is sin. He said, he who doubt is condemned already if he eat, because he does not eat from faith. For whatever is not of faith, is not from faith, is sin. That means whatever we do in our life as Christian, and we are not doing it from the standpoint of faith, or we are not doing it by faith, that is sin. That means that living a life or operating with the faith of God is not negotiable for a Christian that wants to live a life that is free of sin. Therefore, we can see four times, four times in the scriptures, this phrase keeps repeating itself. The righteous or the just shall live by faith. The, if we are ever going to be just, if we are ever going to be righteous before God, living by faith is non-negotiable. Romans chapter 1 verse 17, it said, to, uh, with the just shall live by faith. The same thing uh, uh, in Habakkuk chapter uh, 2 verse 4, it was repeated again in, in Galatians chapter 3 and in Hebrews chapter 10. Keep saying the same thing, the just shall live by faith. So living by faith, even though it's not negotiable for a Christian, we need to know when we are acting in faith or we are acting in presumption or it is complete foolishness. Anytime you are tempting God with any of your action and there is no express command from God about that particular action, it could be foolishness. Presumption means that you just presume that God will do stuff that He had never promised to do. You see, you can only operate in faith when you have a promise from God, or when you have a word from God, or when you have a revelation from God. Something like that has happened to me. I remember I just gave my life to Christ not too long. I was still uh, 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 in college back in Africa, and um, in our fellowship in those days, I see some people will come young ladies and they will give testimony in the fellowship ever since i gave my life to jesus one or two tablet has touched my mouth i was like what and me as at that time whenever i'm leaving the house my mother will pack a multivitamin the one for uh, pain reliever the one for uh, fever i will go to school with loads of drugs or, or medication but yeah i am this one will come, ah, it's been two years, it's been three years, not tablet. So, based on what they were saying, I told myself, me too, I will not use drug again. And not too long after that, I had fever. It was so bad that when, the, thank God I had my senior sister in school, when the teens start to get to a level that uh, even myself, I cannot control the whole stuff again, my senior sister prevailed over me and said, no. I will not be in this college and they say that you, you give up the ghost while I'm here. So she will force me and I will take the medication and almost immediately after taking that medication, I get better. So what happened was that as at that time, I was not really operating in faith. I was operating on presumption, presuming that um, if this person can do it, I can do it too. That was the basis of what I was doing. But I must say this, that I got to a level that I had a particular message. I can't forget that message 
preached by one pastor called Ab King. It was preached in 1985 in a particular church CPM in Nigeria. I listened to that tape. I listened to that tape over and over again until the reality of Jesus taking away my sickness was done on me. And then I made up my mind that I will obey, I will live by faith as far as that was concerned. Fine! It worked for me. It, I mean, it worked eventually for me. There were times that um, I was trying to hold on to the word of God, I had to take medication, but at a time I became strong enough in faith to undo that particular affliction that was coming. It was coming regularly. And for years, I was not taking uh, those medication. I'm not saying medication is wrong. Don't get me wrong. I mean, don't, I mean I'm not saying medication is wrong. Uh, I only encourage people to build their faith one step at a time. Build your faith one step at a time. If it is a headache, you want to start with trusting God for healing. Once you have a headache, trust God to heal your headache. Then take it further and further and further and further as God had given you the growth. But the bottom line is this. Faith will only work when you have a word from God. When there is a word from God, when there is a revelation from the word of God, that is when faith walk. Don't walk in presumption. Don't walk in foolishness. Don't just make up, don't wake up every one morning and say, I want to be doing this where there's no word from God, where there's no promise of God to that effect. If there's no promise of God to any effect, walk on what walk on your mind. But once there is a promise of God, once God had given you a word, and definitely you must know with time how the word of God will come to you. Once the word of God is released towards your direction, once you have received a word from God, a definite promise from God, is sufficient for you to stand up stand on this word and see your victory, irrespective of what is happening in your life environment. So what is Bible faith? How do I know when I'm operating by faith that I'm not sleeping into presumption and I'm not operating in foolishness? Number one thing I want you to know about faith is this. Faith is not hope. If one is saying that God will heal me, God will provide for me, God will help me, anytime what you are declaring is in the future, you are operating in hope. That is not faith. Because faith is now. Hebrew chapter 11, verse 1. Hebrew chapter 11, verse 1. It says, Now, faith is the substance of things up for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the substance of things up for. And it is now that you have a substance of things you are hoping for. Let me use this analogy. You are hoping, you probably have done a particular work and you are hoping for the payment. You are hoping that that payment will come. And you are probably in your office and probably you are hoping that the money will come in a week's time or two weeks time. But you are right in your office and your phone beep and you check it and it's a credit alert for that payment. That credit alert that you saw now is the substance of what you are hoping for. You have it now. You have it now. You are not having that physical cash with you, but you have an evidence that the cash is in your account. That is faith. There is an evidence that is uh, something that you will have that you know with this I'm seeing. This evidence, I know that money is in my account so that alert is the evidence it is annoying it's annoying the only thing is that when it comes to faith is a spiritual knowing that you will receive i know this stuff is a done deal that anytime i get there i will have my money anytime i get in there anytime i get out there i will have my healing but you see, that evidence is what you have seen now. It's there with you now. That is faith. If somebody still promise you the uh, money, will, uh, as long as there is no now evidence with you, you are not getting the faith yet. And you see, that now evidence, evidence is a revelation from God. 
and you are standing on the integrity of the word of God that God that had given me this evidence now cannot lie. That is when you are operating in faith. So what is the what are the principle of faith? The principle of faith is that you have to believe in this spiritual evidence even before seeing the physical evidence. Faith is what in believing a spiritual evidence before seeing the physical reality. But you see, a lot of people, they want to see the physical reality and they are denying the spiritual evidence. The evidence is always there whenever you are operating in faith. If the evidence is not there, you are not in faith yet. You are not operating. You could be operating in hope that I know it will be done. I trust God it will be done. I am believing. But as long as it's in the future, it is hope. It is not faith here. Once it is faith, you will have the now evidence that that is done. Mark chapter, 4, uh, chapter 11 verse 24. Mark chapter 11 verse 24. It makes us to understand that when it comes to the principle of faith, it is in believing in the evidence that you have, even without seeing them yet. Therefore, I say unto you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe you receive them, and you will have them. Believe you receive them, and you will have them. Why are you going to believe that you receive? Because God has promised to give them to you. So it is that process of believing that I want to dwell a little bit on now. The process of believing is what I want to dwell a little bit on now. You see, when it comes to, let's, let me just use healing for example. When it comes to God's healing, it's not the same thing as medical healing. Whenever you are dealing with medical healing, you'll be dealing with the symptoms. You will be dealing with the symptoms. You want to check as the is the is the is the pain is still this there is the pain still there is the is that is there any reaction? But when it comes to God's healing, you don't deal with the symptom. You deal with the evidence. Divine healing has to do. What is the evidence that God's word has said it, and you have believed it, and that settles it. You don't deal with the physical evidence. You deal with the spiritual evidence. Once you have the spiritual evidence and you hold on to the spiritual evidence, you will see the physical evidence. What I normally encourage people, don't start with the big sickness. Start with the little, little one. Check it out. Build your faith. Build your f You can get to that level that you can be totally free from affliction. You can be totally free from, from sicknesses. Free from diseases. But start with the small. Start with the small and build it up over time. So how does biblical faith, how does it operate? You receive a revelation from God and you believe it in your heart. In your heart. You see, human being, we are a all being, but uh, for purpose of, uh, of explanation, in like three compartments. It's not that we, we are not segregated, but it's like, let me put it that way, we are tripartite. There is our spirit, we, who is our real self. Then we have our soul, and we live in a body. So we are spirit. I'm a spirit. You that you are here today, you are a spirit. But you have a soul, and you live in a body. You see, it is with our body that we touch things in the material world. It is with our soul that we interact with the intellectual world, our reasoning. And it is in our spirit that we relate to in the spiritual world. And the God we are relating with is spirit. That is why the Bible makes us to understand that without faith, we can't please Him. Because the, 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 the voice of the spirit or the, opera, the, the model operandi in the spirit is by faith. You see, in the intellectual world, what it takes for us to operate is our reasoning. Is this thing reasonable? Is our mind reasoning? You see, in the body, in the, in the body, what it takes to operate in this body is our feeling. 
Am I feeling it? Am I not feeling it? That is the voice of the body, the voice of the spirit. He, and the voice of the uh, of the soul is reasoning. Is this this thing reasonable? But see, the voice of the spirit or the modu operandi of the spirit is believing. Once God has released it, you believe it. And as you believe it as a spiritual reality, you eventually see the physical reality. So when it comes to the principle of faith, you believe before you see. For Thomas, Thomas said that, he said, Jesus Christ has risen up. He said, me, I will not believe of the have seen. And Jesus eventually revealed to him and said, blessed are those that believe without seeing. What is the basis for the believing? The word of God is the basis for our believing. So, with our spirit, we contact the spiritual realm. With our soul, we contact the intellectual and emotional realm. And with our body, we contact the physical realm. The voice of the body is our feeling. The voice and the mode of brandy in the soul is reasoning. But the mode of brandy in the spirit is our faith. That is why it is not possible to please God when faith is out of it. So in Romans chapter 10, verse 10, as I start to round it up, Romans chapter 10, verse 10. It says, With the heart one believe unto righteousness. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness. You see, the heart here is our spirit. You cannot believe with your flesh, with your body. You cannot believe with your soul. You can, uh, the, the Bible faith is believe with the heart, with the spirit. With the heart, one believe unto righteousness. You see, one thing about the righteousness is that it's not seen. Nobody can see righteousness. Nobody can feel righteousness. But you see, it will take you to believe unto righteousness with your heart. What people can see is salvation. What is salvation? Salvation is the Greek word. The Greek word for salvation is soteria. Soteria means deliverance from harm. It means safety. It means preservation. It means healing. It means soundness. That is salvation. That is what people can see. That is what can be visible to the flesh, to the body. But you see, what the heart believes, and it's called righteousness, is not visible. That is why God makes us to understand that with the heart man believes unto righteousness but with the mouth with the mouth confession is made unto salvation i pray god will open someone's heart so they can get this when you are living in faith when you are believing god for something and you have believed god for it that in the spirit realm is righteousness righteousness is still in the spirit realm but what we justify that righteousness is the salvation. And before you can have that salvation, you must verbalize it. You must give expression to your faith by your confession. So it is our confession. It doesn't matter. Once you have received, once you have received righteousness with your heart in believing the word of God, don't let any negative thing that will contradict what you have believed in your heart that have been imputed to you and credited to you in the spirit of as righteousness because that is the basis for there to be physical manifestation but for there to be physical manifestation there must be confession from your mouth so you believe in God for healing the very first place to do the work is in the heart the Bible says concerning Abraham that when God told him I'm going to make you father of many nations the Bible says he believed God and that was credited to him as righteousness. But in the physical, there was no baby, there was no child yet. Why didn't give up? As any time you believe the word of God, righteousness is credited to you. It is with your mouth now. Or any other thing the Spirit of God is leading you to do in the physical that give expression to your righteous inheritance in the spirit realm so it takes the two it takes with the act in believing and that is where the real work is a lot of people they are exercising faith for what they have not believed in their heart you cannot exercise faith for what you have not believed in your heart before you are not it is with the heart man believe 
before with our mouth we start to make confession. Anytime you want to make confession with your mouth or what have not believed in your heart, nothing will happen. There's no alignment. It is that alignment that delivers the result. What I want is salvation. There's a financial embarrassment that's coming. I want God to intervene. If I believe stuff from my heart that has been treated to me as righteousness, for with the mouth, with the heart, man believe unto righteousness. But then with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. For some of you, what you do, what, what we give practical expression to your faith is your confession. For some other people, it's an instruction. It's in following instruction and obe obeying whatever God has said that will give expression to your faith. But know this, that when you believe stuff in your heart, there must be Something you must do in the physical that will give expression to that faith for the salvation of whatever you are trusting God for to become evidence. We can see for our time, looking at Romans chapter 4, 17 to 21, that was the experience of uh, 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 Abraham. He received revelation from God's word as far as the promise of God is concerned, he believed God's word in his heart and he didn't consider what is happening around him. And number four, he acted upon the word of God. For some, all you need to act upon the word of God is to confess with your mouth. For some other, there's an instruction that God will give unto you to pursue and to follow in saying the salvation. I will not want to edit broadcast without giving someone under the sound of my voice. An opportunity to give your heart to Jesus. If that is a prayer, put it on by your chest and say this prayer after me. Say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you today. Have mercy upon me. Cleanse me from all my sins. Wash me with your blood and write my name in your book of life and in your kingdom. Don't let me be found one thing in the name of Jesus. As I pray that prayer, I agree with you. Your sins are forgiven. They are washed with Jesus' precious blood. Your name is written in the book of life. In God's kingdom, you will not be found wanting and shall be well with you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. See you in our next broadcast in Jesus' name. Amen. That you must go with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. We must experience the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit. When you have been born again, when you have been baptized with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, you have everything it takes to have a victorious, glorious Christian life. The name that is above every other name, by the light of the Word of God today, your eyes are open. There is something about giving sight to people that is crucial to their destiny.